In April of last year, AMD went from always a generation or three behind to blindsiding Intel with their shockingly competitive first gen Ryzen processors based on their all new Zen architecture. Fast forward a year and second gen Ryzen with Zen Plus has been around for a few months now with no response from the blue team yet. But in spite of all of this, among many enthusiasts, there's still this attitude that persists that goes, well, if you're not poor people, then you should just get Intel. So we decided to challenge that perception. And we've got some interesting findings to share with you today. After we tell you about Glasswire. Glasswire is a firewall that displays your PC and Android devices incoming and outgoing network connections in real time. Use offer code Linus and get 25% off Glasswire 2.0 through the link below. We know that some of you are just gonna skip to the conclusion anyway, so we're gonna make your life easier. The short answer is yes. AMD is a viable alternative to Intel. But the long answer has a few buts in it. Now, initially, we had wanted to do an in-depth exploration into things like cache hierarchies and IMC peculiarities, plus, you know, did you knows like Infinity Fabric connecting the dies inside of Ryzen running at half of the memory clock. But I mean, let's face it, if you guys cared about that kind of stuff, you'd be watching Gamers Nexus. So we're gonna focus on the results. Frames per second in games, render times in professional applications, and a side dish of power consumption and storage. Before we even get there though, we need to talk about price. When we built up and priced out our two competing test benches, it became obvious why some people see AMD as the, the poor man's choice. Between Intel's higher CPU price and lack of a decent included cooler on their K-series chips, our AMD platform was over $60 cheaper. Finally, you guys probably noticed that we're running at different memory speeds. Intel's IMC actually does tend to handle high frequency kits better than AMD's, but their spec is actually more conservative. And we're leaving overclocking out of this comparison today. So this is bone stock apples versus officially supported apples. First up then is our gaming benchmarks. In a huge surprise to only the small group of AMD fanboys who insist on remaining willfully ignorant for some reason, in the overwhelming majority of cases, Intel's 8700K defeats the Ryzen 7 2700X. And in some cases, like in GTA 5, by a substantial margin, I mean, I'm talking 20 to 30% greater performance depending on the resolution. And that 4K result really stands out. I mean, that is a resolution that should be GPU bound on pretty much any modern processor if our recent video about system bottlenecks is anything to go by. With that in mind, you can put down your pitchforks, hashtag AMD Red Team, because we are going to point out that not once did we encounter a situation where our gaming experience, at the same graphical settings of course, went from playable on the 8700K to unplayable on Ryzen. It just doesn't change that the 8700K is better for gaming, full stop. And that's even before you get into anomalies like CSGO. For the record, in our testing, enabling gaming mode via AMD's Ryzen Master software actually dropped the FPS across the board with like two exceptions and requires a restart in between modes. So we're not huge fans of it. Our Ryzen 7 2700X did win in some of the synthetic gaming benchmarks though, thanks to its two extra cores, which doesn't indicate anything about real games, but does foreshadow our productivity results. Out of the 11 tests we ran, AMD's offering outright won nine, sometimes putting significant distance between itself and the blue team. I mean, 7-Zip was 50% faster, which it should be noted does affect aspects of your system's performance beyond just unzipping the files you download from the internet. ASUS RealBench encoding was 32% faster, while multi-threaded Cinebench was 28% faster. 
I mean, Intel did remind AMD who the single-threaded boss was by beating it by 15% in single-threaded Cinebench, but that was its only win with our last result, the Realbench image editing test, almost as close as the results of the last Scrapyard Wars. So basically a tie, depending on who you ask. But there's more to life than CPU performance. Let's take a look at some of the quality of life differences. One thing that we noticed was that game load times were affected when we moved between platforms. Even with the exact same drive, we found a variance of up to 15% each way, with Intel on average ending up about 5% faster than AMD. And like the differences in gaming benchmarks, this isn't something that you would immediately notice in a, in a Pepsi challenge taste test, but it is there. Power consumption was also about 10 watts higher at idle and 20 watts higher under load on the AMD platform. Finally, we wanted to touch on the accelerated storage options that each platform features, because we really feel that this is an excellent way to get better than hard drive performance while not giving up on capacity. Now we did a more in-depth piece on this a little while ago, but in summary, Intel has Optane caching, which we have seen work wonders on game load times. And then from our testing, AMD's StoreMI is more cumbersome to use with some unpleasant limitations. Though the big winner, if you watch that video, which you probably should, was actually a third-party software called Primo Cache. So there you have it. AMD is a less expensive solution compared to Intel, and it mostly loses in gaming. So you know what? The trolling from the gaming crowd about AMD being a second-rate solution Nah, it does have some merit to it, unfortunately. But the easy comeback is, well, it's great that your machine games faster, but I've got real work to do. <laughs> and if that is actually true of you, then AMD is a great choice. I mean, really the only thing that could disqualify either of them at this point is platform stability. And Ryzen has matured a lot since its initial launch to the point where, as long as you don't need StormEye, the final answer comes down to what your mix is. And as usual, it depends. Are you a 60% productivity person who games on the side? Go Ryzen and don't look back. You saved a buck, but you still got a great system. What's wrong with that? Meanwhile, are you the gamer who throws together the occasional headshot compilation video? Well, you might want to consider paying the Intel tax. With new graphics cards comes more FPS that can be unlocked with a faster gaming CPU. Speaking of faster, I'm gonna get to this sponsor spot right away. We all have our everyday grooming routines, showering, brushing your teeth, and yes, of course, shaving. And not just your face. Shut up, friend. <laughs> One of my signature moves is pre-soaking my toothbrush so that I can get a lot more mileage out of them before they start to feel too stiff. But no matter what your routine is, Dollar Shave Club, yes, that one, has everything you need. Toothpaste, body wash, razors, etc., to help you look, feel, and smell your best. And Dollar Shave Club is basically giving away their Daily Essentials starter set to new members for just five bucks. It's got trial size versions of their most popular products, including their shave butter, their body wash, and their one wipe Charlies. And it even includes their executive razor, which has a premium weighty handle and a full cassette of cartridges. After the first box, replacement cartridges are sent for just a few bucks a month. So don't wait. Check it out at the link in the video description. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash Linus. So thanks for watching, guys. If you just liked this video, hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed. Maybe consider checking out where to buy the... Uh, uh, I got this. No, I got it. I got it. The stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also linked down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join. Fun fact, bet you didn't know this. Oh, wait, no, never mind. This, it's pretty obvious. Forget it.